So we built this. It's a step motor, and we use an on-off switch and a hedge bridge made from a relay to make it step through its motions, which was fun and kind of useful. But if we want it for something like timekeeping, then we need a much more controlled way of doing that. We looked at counters, again made from relays, although you probably implant them in transistors, to do that job of counting. But what is it that we count? But what we count is oscillations. An oscillator is something that will repeat an action within a fixed period of time. So we have something that is repeating an operation every 60th of a second, and we count to 60, we have, in effect, counted to one second. We can then use our counter to drive the hedge bridge, and this will pulse, tick, once a second, and clearly, we've got ourselves a clock mechanism. So the question is, what do we use as an oscillator? Now you find oscillators absolutely everywhere. A pendulum is an oscillator. The little quartz chip that you get on computers is an oscillator. The quartz chip you find in the clock is the oscillator. You find oscillators in radios all over the place. So oscillators are absolutely everywhere. And we can make an oscillator quite easily from, you guessed it, a relay. Again, it's not the best option, but it does show very clearly what's actually going on. Because inside a relay is a coil. If we connect that coil to the power and one of the switches, it will automatically break the power as the switch opens and closes, and that will set up a frequency of oscillation. You see this all over the internet, with people making relays buzz like crazy because they buzz far too quickly. We want control of the time of the oscillator. We can do that using a capacitor, because inside here, that coil is in fact an inductor. An inductor and a capacitor connected together form what's called a tank circuit or a ringing circuit, which is an oscillator. And because the inductor is connected to a switch, we can automatically use that oscillator to open and close the switch. Now, of course, we could do exactly the same thing in a hundred different ways. It's more than one way to skin a cat. So we could connect an Arduino to a relay and use the Arduino to switch the relay, which would take place of me clicking that off and on. But the Arduino is using a quartz oscillator. So all of these things are doing exactly the same thing. They use an oscillator, they control the time of the oscillation, operate a switch, which operates the hedge bridge, which operates the motor. So we're going to construct an oscillator from a relay and a capacitor. So to get a relay to oscillate is actually pretty simple. You take the positive into the positive side of the coil, the negative side of the coil goes into the common of one of the relays and the normally connected gets connected up to your power supply or battery. We put the power on And it oscillates like crazy and in a way that's next to useless. But if we connect a capacitor across the coil, positive to negative, it will slow it down. And this is 3,300 microfarads and we put the power on. Now the relay is ticking away in a much slower and more usable for us way. The two ways of controlling the speed of that switch are higher the capacitance, slower the switch, or you can add resistance. The higher the resistance, the faster the switching, and you can dial in the time of that click by altering the capacitance and the resistance. And if I stick two capacitors across it in parallel, then it's like having one very big capacitor. So we've got two at 3,300, and we turn the power on. We get a much slower click. Okay. <laughs> so connecting a coil or inductor to a capacitor forms an LC oscillator and it's arguably the most popular type with lots of varieties. You get the Armstrong oscillator, the Hartley oscillator, the Colpitts oscillator and a hundred other flavours that I'm sure I'm forgetting. You can also just connect a resistor and a capacitor together to get an RC oscillator, a resistor capacitor oscillator. They're not nearly as popular, probably because they're, they're not really tuned in so well as an LC oscillator. But oscillators can be made from a huge variety of things. Now, 
A relay is a mechanical switch, so it's going to break. They're rated somewhere between 10,000 and 1 million switching operations, so definitely not the best, but it does illustrate that all we're actually doing is creating an oscillation that we can count, and when we reach a set count, we can operate our H-bridge to operate our stepper motor. And it doesn't matter how you implement that, that is what you're implementing, whether you choose to do it from relays, you choose to do it from discrete electronic components, or you choose digital control through something like an Arduino. Anyway, I hope that helped. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.